the chaos that you're experiencing, the feelings you have, mm-hmm. the schedule just being so frustrating. Mm. Yeah, it it can make it really easy to think that you are doing it wrong. Mm-hmm. Mm. And I think that might go back to what role does the schedule play? It's not, it shouldn't be a taskmaster. It shouldn't be beating you up for doing things the way that you're doing them. It should be essentially steering you into uh, currents that are natural for you and that support you. ADHD Rewired, episode 345. This is the podcast for those of us with really good intentions and a slightly wandering attention. I'm Eric Tivers. I'm a licensed clinical social worker by training and a coach by design. I'm your host and I have ADHD. ADHD Rewired is more than just a podcast. We are a community. We are wired for connection and you are not alone. Go to ADHDrewired.com to learn how you can join us in our free secret Facebook group. Get additional resources for every episode, including links to any resources we we mentioned on today's show. You can support us on Patreon, sign up for our email newsletter, you can request podcast postcards to distribute to your clients and support groups, and you can learn all about our intensive online video-based coaching and accountability groups. You can do all of this at our website, ADHDrewired.com. We know that starting is the hardest part, so let's get started. This is a uh, quick PSA. If you are in the U.S., Elections are right around the corner. If you've already received your mail-in ballot, don't forget to return it. Fill it out and return it. Look at all the instructions. There's a lot of them. I was looking at mine. There's a lot of instructions. Or make a plan. Put it in your calendar. Make sure to vote. Early voting is going on now in a lot of states. Make your voice count. Go vote. Welcome back to another episode of ADHD Rewired. We are here for our third mastermind uh, for our members of uh, ARC20, our admin for ARC20. Uh, we have Natalie and Jessica and Blake and Erica. So y'all can say hello. 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 Blake. Hello. <laughs> You guys are all nerds. All right. Totally. Um, this is our, our take two of starting. We had some audio issues like two minutes into the last one. All right. So um, we're all laughing because when Natalie said hello, the first go, her voice was like way like an octave higher than I said, it, I, I said hi. Usual. Yeah. So now yeah. everyone is just making fun of you, Natalie. Um, well, it's because we care about you. All right. So we are here for Erica, who is in the hot seat today. Um, Erica's issue is not with creating the schedule, but with sticking to it and following it. So dive in for us. Tell us what we can help you with. So again, you're right. I can create a schedule. I've got, I use Google Calendar, which I finally found that it worked after been on years on Microsoft anyway. It was a kind of a rigmarole, but Google Calendar. Um, and I can spend time and put things into that calendar and I do that diligently and I have lots of colors and emojis and I also then tied in a bullet journal which in order to sort of keep some momentum or to fix a problem that has actually created some more problems and that there's stuff everywhere but at the end of the day I can create it I don't look back on it. Eric, you've got the, you know, five by five by five. I've never been able to do that. I had an app that would text me and there's just, there's a resistance. There's a, and like an amnesia. I don't know. And so it's very disappointing um, because I keep trying and trying things and uh, setting up different kinds of, uh, you know, charts and still come to this place where I'm, I'm really not looking at my schedule. Describe your relationship with scheduling. Well, it's interesting you say that, Eric, because I have never had a really a good one. Uh, maybe many, many million years ago when there was a little handwritten kind of like that, which brought me to the bullet journal again. But I feel like in going through the mastermind and preparing for it, I'm like, I, I actually kind of resent this thing. I, I feel like I'm of two minds. I'm two different people when I'm doing this with the schedule. The person who creates it, 
who's ever so happy to do it is so organized and happy and look what I'm going to do. That's what you should be doing. And it ties in with your weekly and your domains and your themes. And then there's the person who actually does it, who is like, who's in it and not remembering and doesn't look at it and is like, eh, I got something else to do or I don't know. Uh, I, you know, so it is not a good relationship really with it. No. So I have a couple of questions. Um, when you schedule your day, how much are you putting on your schedule? Well, uh, sometimes, well, I, I do sort of fill it up. I mean, I'm like exercise between two and three, work on this other project between three and four. Then there's sort of like dinner evening. And, you know, I've got a time block in the morning to do files and, you you know, uh, call doctors and, you know, appointments and those kinds of to do's. Um, So, you know, I kind of fill it up. That's what it's there for. Okay. Do you think part of the resistance is that you're putting too much on it? doesn't feel like a lot. doesn't feel like I'm, you know, but, but possibly, possibly, I mean, exercise, are you, supposed, are you supposed to put in your exercise? Is that? So my thoughts on that are, it depends. Yeah. Like if it's part mm-hmm. of your routine, it's probably not needed. If you're like, if it's something that you know you're going to do, right. If okay. it's something that um, like, well, if you put it in your calendar and it's helpful for you, then I was continue doing that. Right. Um, but I think for things that are routine based, I think it's helpful when it's, when you're trying to develop that routine, like it's not yet established, um, have it in the calendar, but once it's well established, you know, I don't think it's really necessary to put it in the calendar unless you're doing it at a day and time that is not usual and you share your calendar with somebody else and that can impact them as well. Got it. Well, I did. That's interesting because I finally, like I really worked hard at getting a AM routine. Like I timed it. I worked really hard at it because I'm like, I got to do that. Yeah. It was, you know, I timed everything. I checked it off. I was like, okay, four times this week, next week is gonna be five times this week. You're going to do it. So I felt up until a certain point, which then everything somehow went off the rails, but had done that. And I've put that back in my calendar and it does fill it up and make, make me stressed when I look at it because I'm like, Oh, between five and six, you do this between 6am and 7am, you're going to do that. Would it help if you had like multiple calendars in your Google calendar? Maybe you have one that's just routines. And so you can quite like uncheck it and then like you don't see it if, you, if you're finding it overwhelming. Yes. You know, I've done that because I wanted, it's interesting because I, I did it because I wanted to be able to uncheck everything to sometimes just look at appointments. Yeah. I'm like, look, you've got to get to those, you know, so that's like critical mass, like write it to everything but I didn't think about unchecking the routines to sort of take it out of my mind and look at it if I need to, but mm, because that's, you can do the Google calendar. Um, That might help. That might help. Jessica. Yeah. So I'm curious, you, you, you mentioned several struggles here with sticking with your schedule. So I'm wondering what seems to be the biggest roadblock for you? Is it the resistance, the overwhelm, or the amnesia? If you, if you had to gun to head pick one, which one's really dominating? I think amnesia. Though the resistance comes in with task switching. I can feel it sometimes. I fight it. I'm like, well, I don't have anything to do. I could just do that for a little while longer. You know, and there's that kind of thing. But I would think that sometimes it's more like I just... I just didn't bother to look at it. I don't know if that's resistance or not. I don't know if oh. I'm just being, you know, but it just sort of goes uh, out of my mind. Okay. So follow up to that then. Um, obviously there was one strategy in here that you've tried that really stuck out to me because I suggested that you try it. Um, and that was printing out multiple mm. copies of your schedule and posting mm. it. Mm. So if you're Mm -hmm. finding that amnesia is the biggest struggle, I'm wondering how did that wind up working for you and and where exactly did that break down and and not work? 
it worked well for a while. I, I liked it. Um, and then, you know, really everything went off the rails. If I look back on sort of like April time frame into COVID? May. Yeah, I think that was part of it, Eric. And part of it is I, I changed venue. I moved to a different venue. And so I think that had something to do with it. Um, and I think COVID, I got scared and everything seemed to just, I don't know, we all got scared, right? And yeah, everything. And all of our routines got messed up. And like we are, when, when the structures in our lives like change and they're out of yeah. our control, like that can wreak havoc on our lives, you know, especially when, with ADHD. Like it is because we are so environmentally cued and so much yeah. of our routine, like, you know, like when, when right at the start of it, when, um, school got canceled like that you know the, the the routine of me dropping my son off at school like made my exercise routine completely vanished for like a good like four or five weeks right and it, my exercise routine i would say it was a pretty well established routine like it's not something that i felt any resistance towards um so I guess recognizing and having some self-compassion for that. Okay. Like we are in a pandemic that seems to not right. be ending because we have a bunch of idiots as leaders um, who are making yeah. this problem worse. Um, please vote. I'm not trying to make this political, but um, okay. 100%. So yeah. So there are these things outside of our control, but let's recognize that for what it is and then say, all right, so what can we do about this? Yes, you're you're right. And I think I didn't even recognize that they were kind of, it was like, it's like slowly gaining weight. I didn't even recognize that bit by bit, the routines were being eroded till all of a sudden, I just didn't have any anymore. Or I wasn't looking at it at all, or just the appointments. And so sort of that whole thing I had been building towards did, did kind of, did kind of disappear. And I, when I was in it, that's part of the amnesia too, is I'm like, I, oh yeah, I had a routine. I'm looking at it today. I'm going, oh yeah, that's right. I was doing really well. Um, so it's even knowing when you're experiencing it, when you're in the middle of it. Erica, were you like physically printing out your schedule each like morning or the night before? I, I was, uh, trying to print it out the night before and post it in different places in the day. And then of course I had my, my phone I don't seem to look at it as much. So that's why, you know, the printing was, was better. So a couple uh, thoughts on that one. Um, are you familiar with, uh, if, if this, then that, if.com. Mm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm pretty sure that you can, if you have a printer that is connected to the internet, you can mm -hmm. actually create a recipe that will auto automatically print your schedule for you like <laughs> at a predetermined time. Really? I'm pretty sure I've seen that wow. recipe. I like and that. And Jessica's mind is just like blown. <laughs> I am That's like so jaw cool. on the floor right now. You can make it print for you. And I know all about that app. That is amazing. Also, I was wondering about your sort of environment. Like, so where, like, where is your day consist? Are you at home most of the day? Yes, okay. I am. Tell yes. me what kinds of technology you have available to you. Do you have an iPad? Do you have an I Apple do. TV? Um, I have, I have an iPad. I have an iPhone. I have PC monitor. I don't know about, I don't know about Apple TV. Okay. I mean, Okay, because I was thinking, like, it, is it possible yeah. for you to like um, airplay your uh, your calendar and just keep it on your TV? So anytime you're walking past your TV, you're it's, oh, that'd be cool. you have your calendar right there. <laughs> yeah, that's that's interesting, right? Right, and even things like you know, how do you use a computer? Do you keep everything open and then walk away from it, and then whatever when you come back, everything just still there as you left it, or do you close <laughs> stuff down? I kind of, I close stuff down. I do. Okay. Um, That's impressive. Um, so <laughs> what is your, when you open up your, your, um, what do you use? Chrome? Yes. What's your homepage when you open that up? Um, it's just all of my, you know, all of my um, apps and stuff, all of my programs. It's nothing. What if you change that to be your calendar when you open it? You go to, right to the Google Calendar. 
we can do that. Mm-hmm. I'm writing that down. Really? That would be, that would be interesting. There are also plugins that you can put your calendar on your desktop. Okay. Right. So make it as a parent as make it everywhere. Yes. Do you have any of the um, personal assistants like Alexa or? Uh, I've been looking at the Google assistant more recently. Um, I've got, you know, doing a couple of things there. Um, and I do have my schedule emailed to me in the morning. So I'll get an email, um, where that, you know, so that kind of reminds me, I don't have a habit of like just looking at the, um, at the assistant or running that up or looking at it frequently. Okay. Um, on your calendar events, what is your default settings for reminders? I think at one point I might have turned everything off because it was annoying. <laughs> well, because I was like, I can't stand it. Stop! Okay. Shut up! Uh, and you know, um, and that's good though. It's like because because you, you want to find out like what is the just that that the Goldilocks right. effect, right? Like what's the right yeah. amount? Like you don't want too many, you don't want not enough. Right, right. Um, so. I, I have started sort of wanting to have them more in the morning because I've just, instead of doing these individual things for my morning routine, I've said, okay, between like 5 a.m. and 8.30, here's, you know, I would like some reminders within there. So at least I would get an audio to say, okay, now's the time to like switch to this, you know, now it's time to switch to that. But do I, in Google Calendar, do I, when I put a reminder in, does it have to be associated with an event? Do I have to use those reminders? Because the reminders clog up the screen, if that makes sense. Blake, do you want to respond to that? So when it comes to using Google Calendar, there's a bunch of great strategies with balancing both the events that you create and setting up reminders. Yeah. Personally, I like to focus on any noise or notification explicitly coming from events in a very specific way. Um, and reminders are kind of a ad hoc or like band-aid solution for other situations. You can set the default uh, notification settings for events so that when you create them, they already have uh, alarms set up. For me, I have every event, whenever it's created, it will trigger uh, my phone to go off 10 minutes before and then and that's customizable the the event. and that's within google right i mean you can make it like you, you can have it set up to be remind me at the time of the event and five minutes before and 10 minutes yes. before and you know so like so you can create as many of those as you want to so you're leaving yeah you're leaving the noise factor to actual events hardcore not you know, sort of like it's lunchtime. Maybe that's an event for you, but you know, because it starts to lose effectiveness. I feel like I'm hearing all this shit. Yeah. It's, it's satiation to, to the, to the queue. Yeah. Right. I try to make sure that every event that I schedule, I recognize that if there's an alarm that's going to go off, it's only going to go off and be effective if I can respond to it. The worst thing that happens is when I've decided to schedule a bunch of things back to back, even if there's transition time and one alarm after another will just kind of go off and I'll just ignore it. I might just Mm -hmm. skip everything. Right. So a lot of times the alarms that are actually effective are ones that go off that trigger a really significant context switch. For example, I have um, an event for exercise. And usually I'll get out and exercise before it goes off. Mm. But it's at a point in the day where if that alarm goes off, I'll remember I haven't actually done this. And it, it, it breaks that momentum of whatever else I'm doing so I can transition. So speaking of alarms and context switching, we need to context switch to a break. And we will be <laughs> right back. Nice. Support for ADHD Rewired comes from ADHD Rewired Coaching Community, which includes our coaching and accountability groups and our alumni membership community. I hope you are enjoying this podcast. This mastermind session is something you will do when you join the ADHD Rewired Coaching Groups. Go to 
coachingrewired.com to learn more about our intense coaching groups. How do you plan? Do you feel a sense of accomplishment? There is a way to dive into your life with ADHD and try things a different way. The next coaching season starts in January. So if you are interested in our intense online coaching groups that meet three times a week for 10 weeks, go to coachingrewired.com and click on the red button to add your name to the winter interest list. This way you will get all the information for signing up for our next coaching sessions. If you thrive in a team setting, then ADHD Rewired's coaching and accountability groups might be just the kind of coaching you are looking for. After the 10 weeks, you can join our alumni community for continued support. Go to coachingrewired.com to learn more, then click on the big red button at the top of the page to add your name to our winter interest list. So whether you're brand new to the podcast and interested in coaching, or you've been thinking about joining these groups for a while, take that first step. Go to coaching rewired.com. This isn't a crash course um, where you meet a bunch of cool people and make a bunch of brand new friends and everything's great for 10 weeks. And then you go back to your regular life. This is integrating tools and new understanding about yourself that you carry on into the rest of your life. And in addition to that, not just with the A teams that we are in and the members of our group that we build relationships with that are obviously going to carry on, but that also by being part of the same mighty network as the alumni community, I already feel like I'm part of this larger continuing organization. I don't feel like I'm going to be left back to my own (laughs) devices after our graduation. And I already have all these great plans and a couple relationships built with alumni community members from past group sessions. It feels wonderful. That's coachingrewired.com. Hey, if you are new to this podcast, I want to welcome you. I also want you to know that we have two other podcasts on the ADHD Rewired Podcast Network. We have Hacking Your ADHD with Will Curb and ADHD Essentials with Brendan Mahan. This week on Hacking Your ADHD, Will is continuing his series on giving yourself some slack. This week's focus is self-compassion. Join Will as he explores ways that you can work with your ADHD brain to do more of the things that you want to do. Check out the latest episode that dropped yesterday. These episodes are short. They're about 15 minutes long. Go to hackingyouradhd.com for show notes and to subscribe or subscribe right now on your podcast player that you're listening to this on. And every Friday, check out ADHD Essentials with Brendan Mahan. Brendan's podcast is a lot like this one with a focus on families, parents, and educators. And stay tuned in coming weeks and uh, up to the end of the year, We're going to be introducing two new podcasters to you. We actually introduced one of them at uh, last week's live Q&A. So if you uh, caught that live, you got to meet one of our new podcasters. Both Hacking Your ADHD and ADHD Essentials are both part of the ADHD Rewired Podcast Network. Available to everyone, everywhere you consume podcasts. And you can join me and the host of both of those podcasts, Hacking Your ADHD and ADHD Essentials, every second Tuesday of the month. And if you caught this last week's podcast or last week's live Q&A, which will be airing next month, then you got to meet one of our new podcasters who's going to be joining the network with a new podcast starting in January. So next month on November 10th at 1.30 p.m. Eastern, you can have an opportunity to meet both of our new podcasters who are going to be launching podcasts in January. So come meet them, ask them questions, ask us questions, and we look forward to seeing you there. Go to ADHDrewired.com slash events. Mark your calendars. We do this every second Tuesday of the month. We've added the dates through 2021. So you can go to the website and register for a bunch of them. You'll have to do it once. I think maybe every six months is the way we have it set up. Go register. We love talking with you at our live Q&As. That's ADHDrewired.com slash events. We hope to see you there. All right. Um, we are back. Okay, so um, Blake was just sharing some ideas about his alarms and and different setting up different uh, alerts and reminders. Um, Jessica, what what did you have? 
Yeah. So I just kind of wanted to follow up and go back to the resistance piece because I noticed that 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 is clearly a piece for you. So I'm wondering with the resistance, I know you mentioned a bit earlier on, you know, just now that Mm -hmm. part of it was task switching, was looking at your schedule and seeing that you needed to go do something else and feeling frustrated about that. Could you elaborate a bit more on that? It's just you're, I'm in something. And even if it's, this is where it gets gray because I could keep doing what I'm doing. If I'm not, you know, working, then it's like, well, it's just time to switch because you need to get other things done in your day. So it's just thinking two things happen. Either it's like, I don't want to, and I'll do it later. Or that other thing can be put to the side. Those are like my favorite personal self lies that I tell myself. (laughs) So, so with that, are you building in buffer times for your transitions? I, I I actually have, and I realized that back in, in sort of February, I'm like, why is this taking so long? Or what is this weird time I'm, you know, that I'm spending? I'm like, oh, it's transition time. Okay. So I do understand the transition time. And sometimes I can get there um, and say, okay, and work my way through it. But it's just saying, uh, yeah, I can do it later or... Or uh, I just, you know. Compared to your second event and beyond for the day, how would you compare um, activating on your first scheduled thing compared to everything that's not your first scheduled thing? Oh, yeah. It goes downhill from the morning. Okay. So for me, sure. So and by the afternoon, I'm like, a, you know. So, so here's one of the things that I think happens sometimes is – Look at it. Think about it as like the the unspoken, unseen thing. So you're working on a thing, right? And you've had this thing scheduled, and you're doing it, and you're, yeah. you know, you're you're adult and like a champ, right? And then that alert comes from your phone. Yeah, that there's another thing coming on, coming up, and you're like, wait, I'm still working on the thing. So what do I do, right? So. In order to start that other thing, you need to stop the first thing. And the thing that is often the unspoken and unseen is that all the steps that are involved of stopping a task. Yeah. Right. And I think that is the thing that makes transition so hard. Yes. Right. Because I mean, if, if we do a task analysis, and I know that Nat- Natalie's all about task analysis as an OT, um, you know, that... Like even like for me, when I think about like, all right, it's time to leave the office. Um, so right. the first barrier is, damn, my meds have already worn off. So this is just by default a harder task, you know, just because of that, right. you know, right. so there's the, I have to like unplug my laptop. I have to uh, put that, put that laptop in my, my the sleeve that I put it in and then put that in my bag. I got to turn off my audio mixer. I got to turn off my lights. I got like all like there's, there's like 20 different small steps and like i mean even in and if, I have to, if i have to calculate like do i need to pee before i leave like oh it just God. sometimes is too much it's just like and then i'm like debating should i hold it because i only have like a five minute drive it, but then like should i sleep on the couch i, I mean, mean just like yes, yeah yeah yeah, 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 it, yeah yeah and so i think it's important to actually recognize that like all of those steps add up in a very like synergistic way that makes like Two steps is not just two steps. It's like, it's exponentially harder the more steps we, we have to do, right? So being really explicitly clear on um, what is involved in wrapping up the, the current task so you can move on to right. the next. Boy, it's such a big part. You're right, because it's stopping. We talk about like task switching and it really is so much harder than just those two little words, you know? It's really not like just turning your brain one way or turning your head one way to the other and switching, you know? It's yes. like, oh, it's hard. And it and and part of your brain's like, what the fuck are you doing this for? Just keep on doing what you're doing. Right. You're doing and, great. And because we're not sure of like how to if we're not going to finish it at that moment. So instead of like yes. actually wrapping it up in an organized way, we just leave it out open on our desk thinking that that would be sure. a great cue to help us come back to it later. And then, you know, we realize, holy crap, like where did my desk go? Is that, is this the thing that's, under, that's holding up all these papers? Um, yeah. Yeah. 
yeah. And then it gets, then you start to feel badly about what everything looks like. Yeah. And so, you know, kind of it's on. Blake? I just want to kind of affirm the perspective you have on this chaos in adhering to your schedule. Because I think that is a word that you can attribute all of these things Eric has described to if you're trying to move from one thing to another and all of these different things are happening. Yeah. It's a really chaotic environment. And that is a really hard situation to adhere to a schedule in. Right. Yeah. And yet it's true. So it is chaos. So it's sort of like leading into the chaos and expecting it. I think part of this feels like, you know, we get a lot of shoulds. We should all over ourselves. I should be able to do this. How hard can it be? And yet our brains don't really want us to do that. And they want us to do something else altogether. Um, but the sort of real world or the, you know, the world of goals and plans, we have, we have to do the scheduling. That's what I've determined. Like if I don't schedule and I don't plan, nothing happens and other shit happens to me as opposed to me taking control of it, you know? Yeah. Uh, you know, like you don't control your schedules. Something else is going to. Yes. Um, Natalie, go ahead. I, so a few things here. Um, something when I was reading your mastermind sheet that stuck out to me a lot was like so much resentment. Yeah. Like you have this like intense need to be the adult you think you should be. Oh yeah. That was, yeah, yes. that was all over the mm -hmm. page so much oh, so yeah. that I was like, why I wanted to rip it up and be like, no, we don't need to like, we have these ideals that we've made that are fake. They're just so fake. Erica, can, like, you, can you read uh, the, the response to number two? The, I would like to mastermind this issue because I'm hoping to. When I reviewed my notes for my yearly goal sessions, first time I ever did that, there has been some progress made. One theme I wrote was functional adulthood. And I know we've all had some discussion around the world, word functional in this little team of ours. But anyway, I know. Natalie hates that word. But the fact is that not being able to follow a schedule every day to some degree, and I threw that in just now, feels very broken and not like a functioning adult. So here are some things I listed for functional adulthood. Knows and keeps the schedule. Plans ahead. Plans time with friends. You kill me, Natalie. Why is that problem? <laughs> Makes time for fun activities. Then other things. You want me to keep going? Does not do things that would hurt one's body. Now, these don't have to do with schedule, takes care of health, understands and participates in home finances. These seem very basic to me. Follows through on commitments and projects. And there are several more as this was a theme for the year. Um, but the ones that I highlighted in there uh, pertain to schedule and plans. Now, Natalie, I ask you, why does that seem so crazy? They themselves aren't crazy. It's that your goal for the year was to become a functioning adult that encompassed literally all of those things. Oh, there's more too. Yeah, right. You said you said there are some you didn't even put there. I'm oh, like, yeah. like, okay, so like, I think that this idea that we have of a functioning adult is too much like perfectionism and not like an actual like person who functions like if you were to do all those things you had listed, you would not be a functioning adult. You would be a computer. Like, yeah. <laughs> like all right, not you're, all you're, the things, but what about the things that are highlighted? So, all right. So just the things that are highlighted then now let's talk about the things that you highlighted, right? You very specifically like wanted to complete these things every time. You know what? Something ADHD people can't do. Complete something every time. We will never do that ever. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm feeling you, Natalie. There, I did write down as I was looking at this that perfectionism is the is the child of shame, and so I do feel that there is. And and some here, of let this. me let me tell you, like a little. Can't a little, I just do a little bit of these? You can do a little bit. No, here, like here's my thing. So I. I wanted, 
I very much, when I first did this group, was where you're at. Because, you know, being an occupational therapist, which I like to talk about all the time, I knew all the things I had to do and just couldn't fucking do it. Right? <laughs> Excuse <laughs> like, me, just like suddenly throwing in swear words. How, how like, do you think I feel? Right. <laughs> I teach this shit and I have a hard time doing it. Part of the reason why I joined your group to begin with was like, oh my God, this is stuff I like should be able to teach. Why can't I do it? Let me do this group of another person who also has this, who also teaches us how to do it, who has seemed to figure it out. Right. And then I took this course and I was like, oh, the figuring it out is that I like am not going to be able to do it this way. I think it can happen. It's just mad. That's just magic, unrealistic, just not possible. Right. You know, Erica, what, what, one of the reasons why I love the the book, The One Thing, yeah. it's, to, it's to drive home the point of we could do one thing pretty well. It's when we start adding other things <laughs> is when life becomes yeah. like feels unmanageable sometimes. Right. Yeah. So it's like less is always more. Right. And so it's like, well, these are all great things, but one thing at a time. So let's say you maybe for, um, you know, you talk about make plans with friends right now. Maybe that's, you know, makes sense to not be the, the top goal because yeah, that was there's, back. There's, I wrote that down a long time ago. Yeah, exactly. There's, there's a pandemic going yeah, on right. and that just makes things challenging. So, yeah. you know, um, so thinking about all right, what, it, you know, and so looking at when we look at domains in life, right, looking at what are and pr- truly prioritize what is the most important for you right now for the next couple months, right? And so once you get the thing that is the most important, like, so you can have things that, okay. like number two, number three, and those are fine to have those. But then when you're trying to figure out in your day, what am I doing? You ask yourself, what did I say, you know, a couple months ago was my number one priority. And then so that becomes the thing you schedule first that day. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is interesting because I get, I get what you're saying. And I think that I've been not scheduling to what I want to do. And I think that's why I don't want to follow it. Cause I'm like, I don't, who, who the fuck made this schedule? I don't like, <laughs> I don't like her. I'm a, there's I'm going to get somebody else's that. schedule. There's, there's a little bit of that. It's like what I, there's a lot of shoulds and, you know, and so maybe that's turn it around, you know, I see what you're saying. So my other thing that I was going to say is that like we, we schedule all these things that we want to get done because we wish we didn't have to do them anymore and not because we actually want to do them. Right. And to an extent we are adults and we have a bunch of things that we like need to do. Right. right. But don't want to do. And so right. like we'll have to do it eventually, but like we have a max capacity as people to the amount of those things that we can do in a day. Mm. So whenever I go about my day and need to pick like a thing to do, that is something I would wish to never, ever do in my life ever again, but I have to do it because we do have to be adults. Like I only pick one, just Mm -hmm. one of those things. And then once I do that thing, I celebrate it because it doesn't matter how easy I think it should be. It's the fact that for me, that thing is really hard Mm. and And if I make myself do a bunch of those hard things in a row and then don't Mm -hmm. even reward myself and I get Mm. to the end of the day and the thing that's supposed to make me happy is that I did it all, it's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. So I always schedule that thing like in the morning when I have more thought. And then immediately after I give myself a little bit of a period to do whatever I want as a celebration. But I also right. have tips and tricks about transitioning, but I'm going to let other mm. people talk and then raise my hand again if we have time about transitions. All right. So here's <laughs> what we're going to do. I wanted to just circle back to something from earlier and then we're going to take a quick break. I do want mm. to ask you about the actual sounds that are being used for your notification. Are you using like the air raid siren or are you using no. a sound like? Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, I, I do very gentle sounds. Okay. Because I find that a sound like that, it's, it's alerting, but not anxiety provoking. And I think right. that's really important. Like, don't have the air raid siren going off. Because um, it's, if, it's, yes. if you need that kind of reminder, it's already probably something you don't want to do. So why are you just going to, why are you going to add to the anxiety um, for it? So with, um, with that, let's, uh, let's take a quick break. 
This podcast is brought to you by our patrons who give each month over at ADHDrewired.com slash Patreon. As this podcast is free to you, the listener, it is not free to produce. I appreciate everyone who can financially support this podcast. And I want to welcome our new patrons. Uh, last week, you may have caught that I said I wanted to thank our three new patrons and then Never actually named them. So those patrons were Sharon S., Jen K., and Jacqueline I., who all supported at a $25 a month level. So thank you so much. And this week, we have a new patron. It's Viral D. at a $10 a month level. Thank you for all of your support. If you are in a position to show your support financially, you can do so by going to ADHDrewired.com and just click on the Patreon tab at the top of the page. Whatever you can give, I appreciate your support. And when you support ADHDrewired.com on Patreon, you can get cool perks starting at just $5 a month. Like last week, I posted extra content after our live Q&A was over. I continue to answer questions and those were posted on Patreon. More and more patrons are becoming patrons because they want to take part in our monthly coaching calls, which you can do starting at just $25 a month. For those of you who have been giving at that level, your next group coaching call is Tuesday, October 27th at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. Our group coaching calls for patrons are every fourth Tuesday of the month at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. And if you can give just $10 a month, you can have access to the recordings of those Patreon calls, plus a bunch of extra content like webinars and some recordings of me playing piano. Plus, if you would like to get ad free episodes for just $5 a month, let us know by voting on our Patreon page at ADHDrewired.com slash Patreon. We haven't pulled the trigger on that yet. We're waiting for a little bit more feedback. But if this is something, if you love the podcast but don't love the ads and you're like, I just want to hear the podcast and not the ads, become a patron. But go vote so we know that's something you would actually be interested in supporting financially. But if right now you are not able to support the podcast, I understand there are lots of people who are in really difficult financial situations right now. One way you can support this podcast is by leaving a review on your favorite podcast player and by sharing this podcast in your social media groups if you are on any groups that are associated with ADHD. Leaving those reviews and sharing it with others both help other people find this podcast, which then allows me to help more people. All of your support is appreciated. To become a patron, go to ADHDrewired.com slash Patreon. Patreon is P-A-T-R-E-O-N. That's ADHD, rewired.com slash Patreon. And thanks. And we're back. So I'm having a thought about this, this resistance and what you guys are saying about, you know, the scheduling time and how much you can do in a day. And I think it's that the schedule is to me, um, the relationship and Yarek, you asked that, what, you know, what's your relationship? And it's, it's a punisher. It's not a partner, you know, like, and it does get into a little bit of like, well, you know, you know, should you scheduling in fun and that doesn't seem very productive and all that, that there's a little bit of that going on too, but the schedule definitely seems like to schedule in, if you're going to read for an hour. It does seem like not the schedule's job. You know, Eric, I'm wondering if the the, the framework of in, in relationships, when you have someone yeah. who's more like Dom and somebody who's more submissive, um, <laughs> right? Like you want to be the dominant one here and let the calendar be the submissive one. Right? It doesn't work very well the other way. Yeah. Yeah. Jessica, go ahead. Okay, on that. Oh. Um, interestingly <laughs> I know, enough, I, 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 I'm thinking I, about leather right now. But anyway, I, yeah, no. Interestingly enough, I wrote down basically the same thing, completely different terminology. <laughs> um, but it's I, I'm really seeing, I'm seeing clarity and kind of almost a two part pattern here, and it's becoming pretty obvious, at least to me, why if I were in your shoes. I would totally avoid my schedule too. So 
thing one, going back to, you know, what Natalie said, that part where you wrote down, I highlighted the heck out of that myself. And I had written like, first of all, I don't know any functional adults who can do these things. And I know a lot of people with no ADHD. And then I put, is it possible that the reason you're struggling is because you're trying to be a unicorn? (laughs) Second piece, I put, can you look at your schedule as a guide or an assistant rather than a rigid dictator? You're trying to force yourself to do a bunch of things that are really hard. And you're trying to use this schedule to boss you around and make you do it. Right. That's hard. That's really hard. Yeah. So your overarching goal, though, is that you do want to reach your goals and you want to do these things that are really important to you and that do matter to you. So how can you sit down with your calendar and say, you know, calendar, you've been a real jerk. And this relationship doesn't work like this for me anymore. So I'm going to need you to start taking my orders. And then at some point in the day, if you're being a bit too pushy, I'm going to ask you to move that later on and talk to me a bit nicer. Then maybe we can get some stuff done. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you. I'm feeling that. I really am. I, I think you're right. I think, I think I just, it's the way I'm viewing it, not as an assistant, not as a guidepost, but as uh, what I have to do. Like, think about it as it's your GPS. And if you want to take a detour, like, you can. Like, you just have to yeah. reroute yourself, right? I mean, when I when I time block uh, tasks, like, that I'm, that I'm working on, um, if I happen to not get to it at that time, I just move it. Like, right, like, there's no story in my head about, oh, I didn't get to it. At my, like, I just move it. Didn't happen then. Okay, got to move it. And if I keep doing yeah. it, then I'll, then it's a different conversation that I have with myself yes okay like what's going on is it not important or what are you avoiding type right thing? like is it is it more awful than I even think it is <laughs> so uh, I'd like to circle back to my little yeah no you're right to my little things that I highlighted okay and I want to ask each and every one of you you're saying that all of those things there's nobody who does that nobody with ADHD or nobody neurotypical no I well I think that doing all of those things consistently Okay. It's hard. Like I am, I would say when it comes to work stuff, I'm pretty good at like yeah. doing the things that I intend on doing. And I say, when I say pretty good, 80%, like pretty it's, good. it's pretty good. Like in, and last few weeks, I, I've not been at 80%. Let's just get that real, make that clear. <laughs> um, when it comes to home stuff, oh man, I am not like, I'm at like, maybe generously 35%, right? Right. Um, and even so I, I've, so I have to get a, a tree trimmer, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so what I realized is that like, I, it's, it's like funny when I like recognize the things that I teach others, like I'm not doing myself, right? Yeah. And it's like, oh, like I actually didn't have the first task. Like I need to like go on Yelp or on next door and get recommendations and then get quotes. Like I, like I jumped to the, like I needed tree trimming. Like who am I calling? I don't know who I'm calling. Like no wonder why it's been on this for so long, right? Right. So stuff like that. And and I had I don't have that in my calendar. I actually have that on a, dr- a little dr- like a uh, eight by thirteen dry erasing that's on the side of the fridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I got you got to think right. about where are you going to be seeing this thing in the context. Yes. All right. So that's that's about what how okay. I use it. Um, I do right. I do add in my calendar just like if I want to wanna call somebody like a friend or a family member, um, I will yeah. add that to my calendar because I'm pretty good about like because I'll just sliver in like fifteen minutes call and just do that yeah, i'm yeah. pretty good about that because then also the, the iphone if you if it's if you sees call so and so the reminder pops up and it actually there's a button there that says like after you want to call that person you just push the phone button and it calls it's about as easy as it can get wow that is beautiful the schedule can be your friend it can be it can be blake what about you so asking the question about Knows and keeps to a schedule, plans ahead, plans time with friends, makes times for fun activities, falls through on commitments and projects. The way you asked us this question, it actually reminds me of 
another question you ask uh, and, and what you wrote up where you ask, how do you feel about following your schedule? Mm-hmm. And I think it w- that stuck out to me because I personally have a lot of feelings. I, I swim through them every day. And when it comes to how do I, how do I feel about my schedule? I, I look at all these things and I'm like, yeah, I don't do those things as much as I want to. And a lot of times I can feel kind of bad about that. A lot of times I'm just confused and I don't know why it's not working. But what I do know is that more often than not, my feelings will define really if if I start believing them, I'm just going to start seeing uh, myself as not a functional adult. Um, I think prescribing some definition to what it means to be functional, uh, what it means to be adult, that puts you in this, this fun zone where you can start to you know, when things aren't going right, compare yourself to something that is impossible. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think it's impossible to not, I don't think it's impossible to do these things regularly. And yeah. I don't think it's impossible to do what you wrote out somewhere else. Uh, I wrote this down. Um, I went, I went diving trying to find like, okay, what, where is that hopeful vision that she's writing about? Because mm. it clearly is not being a functional adult. And somewhere you wrote you want a happier life Mm. like you can have that Mm. and you can have that without doing all of these things all the time Mm. Mm -hmm. these are tools that will help you get there but definitely the chaos you're experiencing the feelings you have Mm -hmm. the schedule just being so frustrating Mm. yeah it it can make it really easy to think that you are doing it wrong Mm -hmm. Mm. and i think that might go back to what role does the schedule play it's not it shouldn't be a taskmaster it shouldn't be beating you up for doing things the way that you're doing them it should be essentially steering you into uh currents that are natural for you and that support you yeah yeah mic drop dang yeah all of you god this is good like that that was really nice um I was also, you know, Blake, when you posed that, that question about the feelings from the calendar, um, something that, that I was just reflected on was that, you know, for me, it's generally pretty neutral, but when it's not, it's really like a litmus test for my self-care. Like if I'm like, if I feel resistance, if I'm like, all oh, the things, I don't want to do any of them, right? Like that, like then I'm not taking care of myself. Right. So either my sleep is, is not well, I'm not exercising, I'm not managing stress, right? I'm not having enough fun, right? All, all of those things are the things that where I, or I find that the I don't want has become like everything, right? But gen, like, but on a good day in my calendar, it's, 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 a, it's a neutral tool. Right. That makes sense. So I know that uh, Eric, you wanted to hear from Jessica and Natalie too about this, this question about how you do schedules and then we'll wrap this one up yeah um wow i'm still kind of processing what you just said eric about the the litmus test and blake got like chills all over my body like we're up in church right now or something um (laughs) yeah so feelings about the calendar um i vacillate to be honest um probably slightly different when it comes to me because I have comorbid OCD. So (laughs) there are times when me having a really structured schedule is actually an indicator that I am not healthy in the moment. And that is my way of coping with it. Um, So I, I vacillate. There's times when I get all the things done on the calendar and I feel amazing. And there's times when I look at the calendar and I realize that I've put things on the calendar because of unhealthy reasons so that I can check things off of the calendar so that I can feel good about it. In which case I look at the calendar and go, I'm not doing those things and I feel good about it. And then there's times that I get it all done and I feel bad about it and times that I don't get it all done and I feel bad about it. And and that's why I think for me, just looking at all of these things 
and saying that doing all of those things consistently is functional adulthood, then I've never met one. Yeah, I, I do think it's really important that we're not comparing ourselves to others because keep in mind what you are then doing is comparing your insides to others outsides. And that is not a fair comparison. Right. Right. Natalie, what about you? So I wrote in the chat that you're not going to be happy if you spend your life punishing and bullying yourself. And I think for a long time, I was punishing and bullying myself because I believed if I could get myself there somehow, if I gave myself some tough love, which is fake, don't ever fall for that. There's no such thing as tough love. Um, and that then I could get to this point where everything would be okay. Right. I think I think the idea of tough love is just a rationalization for I'm going to be an asshole to you, but I want you to know that I have your best feelings at heart. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like sometimes we need to hear things that we don't want to hear, but we don't need those things to be said in a mean way. Right. Right. So why, like, so my feelings about my calendar, like, have drastically changed over the past few years, mm. and I've this past week has been very interesting for me because I've gotten excited about all the things on my calendar. Right. And that's because of my mastermind where now I'm right. doing all these things I really want to do all of a sudden. Right. right. And right. now that I'm doing all these things that I really want to do, these things that I don't want to do are easier. Yeah. Right. And like, I've had this thing on my like to do list for weeks to, to like, um, to, to email people and talk to people about my RV insurance that I need to change. And suddenly it's not hard and I feel capable. It is connected and to a bigger purpose. It's cause it's connected to, yeah, it's cause it's connected to a bigger purpose. And because I'm doing all these things now that I want to be doing and I'm succeeding at them because I want to do them like, and then today I had to go to work, work, unexpectedly not on my business and I had some things I wanted to get done between this and when I got back from work and I didn't do any of it and I'm like you know I feel like what you've been forcing yourself to do for work has really drained your spirit and how do you expect to do anything in life with that right so and then you realize it's not your relationship to the tool it's not your relationship yeah. to the calendar it's your relationship to what you're doing what you're doing what you're literally doing mm -hmm. your energy mm -hmm. level around life yeah. as a whole right and so, right well yeah a lot of the time I do feel really neutral about my tools and mm -hmm. I think it's because I finally started looking at them like tools right and not like things that rule over me but right. like it it what's in your calendar that's yeah. what the purpose is. And that's where the feeling comes. Yes. Yes. Am I the only right. one that just had the thought of that commercial that goes, what do you want on your tube zone? <laughs> <laughs> what do you want on your calendar? What do you want on your calendar? Yes. No, these are really interesting guys. Really great. Let your calendar be the, the reflection of the life that you want versus the, yes. you know what I mean? Like, right, right. And your calendar doesn't judge you, by the way. <laughs> it doesn't give a shit what you do, to be honest. I mean, it's right. It's it's there. That's it's true. there for you. Use it how you want to. Yeah, it really is a larger a larger thing about taking the time, spending time on what you want, still doing the adult things that you need to do, that we have to do, you know, and making sure those get done. Be careful, though. About I mean, yes, I think we should take care of our responsibilities and then do sure. the fun stuff. Right. But don't think you have to do all of the responsibilities before right. you can do any fun stuff. Oh, that's so me too. Yeah. Right. Like, yes, do do the do a responsible thing and then do a fun thing. Like, right. I think the worst thing that happened to me growing up was my parents telling me I couldn't do anything fun until my, my homework was done. Because. Yeah now we have this idea that we can't do anything fun until we get everything done. And now that we're adults, we're never going to get everything done. Damn it. Ned, I just had this like very visceral like response to you saying that. And I'm sure like probably every listener just did too. Yeah. Like, like oh. oh God. 
Right. You have to get all that done first. I had this memory the other day about when I was in fourth grade and sitting trying to get my math homework done. And instead of doing that math homework, I sat all the way until dinner time carving something underneath my windowsill in my room. And I'm just like, wow, how didn't we figure out I had ADHD? (laughs) And it's because I would sit in my room and not leave until I got my homework done. And then that worked. What are your takeaways from this? Oh, yeah, I have so many. You guys are amazing. And I'm just so happy um, that you're the team that I'm talking to this with. Um, My takeaways are that I'm going to look at my calendar in a different way. And uh, I, may, I may write a little note, a little letter to my, to my calendar, just like we do with your ADHD. I love it. Yeah. And just maybe, you know, and think about that a little bit more and, um, and look at and see what's really on there. And what am I trying to follow? And the, you know, kind of why of this and, what are the things that not just the things that are kind of the things I want to fix about myself? <laughs> you know, I guess you know, there's so much of that in yearly goals. Like I got to fix that, you know, but the things I actually want to do and put those and put those into my schedule too. I, um, I love the idea of the letter and I just, I wanted yeah. to, I wanted to um, uh, suggest a variant possibly of that. Yeah. First, can you bring to mind someone who embodies kindness, warmness, and compassion. Okay. Now put that personality in your calendar and write a letter from your calendar who has that personality to you. Oh, good one. Wow. Okay. That's, that's awesome. I'm going to do that. That could be a game changer there. Mm. I love that. And I'm also going to just think more about sort of the stopping when I am doing something and and getting on to the next thing and, um, and understanding that that's hard for us. And that I think you've all said so many things, but as Natalie said, like to celebrate the things we I do do and note that it doesn't have to be like everything done in one day or this week or whatever. Um, and, uh, and look at that resistance, um, you know, about, you know, the whole, the whole basis of this, this resistance to this, because, because it hasn't really been a tool. It's just, it's just been a mirror of good shame. So, okay. If, uh, if shame comes up as a requested calendar event, you can decline. <laughs> I will decline it. I will not, nope. I will not yet. <laughs> no. Nope. I will decline it. Thank All you. All right. So Erica, I hope this was helpful for you. So helpful. Um, and we'll be uh, probably back next week with our last mastermind, I think. Yes. Our fourth mastermind. Mm-hmm. Awesome. All right. We hope that everyone found this helpful. And uh, yeah, and that's, um, that's all we wrote. That's all we wrote. Thanks, guys. This is Eric Tivers. Thank you for listening and congratulations for making it to the end. ADHD Rewired is a more than just a podcast. We are a community focused on learning, growing, and connection. The website is ADHDrewired.com. You can find summaries and additional resources for each episode. You can apply to our free and secret Facebook community. You can learn more about ADHD Rewired's intensive online video-based coaching and accountability groups and sign up for my email newsletter to get exclusive content you won't get anywhere else. It's all at ADHDrewired.com. While you're there, click the Patreon button. If you're a regular listener and you're still listening to my voice, consider making a monthly contribution by becoming a patron through our Patreon page. If you are able to financially support my work, it would mean a lot. This show is free to listeners, but it is not free to produce. And patrons get really cool perks. You can follow me on Twitter at Eric Tibbers. You can like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash ADHD Rewired. If you're a coach, therapist, or related professional, connect with me on LinkedIn at linkedin.com slash Eric Tibbers. You can also subscribe to ADHD Rewired on YouTube 
And you can subscribe to ADHD Rewired on YouTube and see select interviews and some other videos I've posted. Podcasts change lives. You can make a difference in someone's life by spreading the word about this podcast. Mention it in your online communities on Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, or wherever you hang out online. And be sure to share it with your friends and your family and your clients, as well as your coaches, therapists, and doctors. And if you're a coach, therapist, doctor, or ADHD support group leader, and you would like a pack of podcast postcards to hand out, you can request those at my website, ADHDrewired.com. And if you're a member of Chad or any other ADHD support group, please be sure to tell them about this podcast. You can even show them how to download it on their phone. You know, you might be the person that turns somebody on to a podcast for the very first time. And if you really love this episode, please consider hitting share on your podcast player. I'm only one person and I count on you to help me spread the message. One of the biggest things that you can do to support this podcast and to help other people discover it is to leave an honest rating and review on Apple Podcasts, on Stitcher, or any other podcast app that accepts ratings and reviews. And don't forget to hit subscribe on this podcast on your podcast app so new episodes are automatically pushed to your favorite podcast app. Looking for more ways to listen and learn? Get a free audiobook and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash ADHD Rewired. Not sure where to start? In no particular order. Check out Atomic Habits by James Clear, The Body Keeps Score by Bessel van der Kolk, 10% Happier, and Meditation for Fidgety Skeptics. These are both by Dan Harris. Change Your Questions and Change Your Life by Marilee G. Adams. The One Thing by Gary Keller and Jay Papasan. Procrastinate on Purpose by Rory Vaden. The Four Tendencies by Gretchen Rubin. Do you have trouble asking for help? Listen to The Art of Asking by Amanda Palmer. It's one of the best produced audiobooks I've ever heard. If you're looking for something a little bit more, say, magical, I unexpectedly fell in love with the Harry Potter series. And I don't usually listen to those kinds of books. And I loved it. And of course, if you haven't yet boarded the Brene Brown bus yet, check out Brene Brown's books, starting with The Gifts of Imperfection, Daring Greatly, Rising Strong, The Power of Vulnerability. And if you're an entrepreneur or a leader in any capacity, check out her 2018 book, Dare to Lead. And Brene still is my most wanted guest. So if you know Brene, you would be so kind to make that connection for me. I would be really, really grateful. You know who else I would like to have on the show? You. Click the podcast tab at ADHDrewired.com and then click the Be a Guest button at the top of that page and schedule a 15-minute pre-interview. This is Eric Tibbers reminding you to keep learning, keep growing, and keep connecting. Self-care is not selfish, and no matter what gets done or doesn't get done, at the end of the day, you are still enough. And no matter how hard it feels, we can do hard things. Thanks for listening. I'll catch you next week.